Okay, I've wrestled the catamaran into the barn. Now it's time to take the rudder assembly off. And uh, I'll look at removing some of this stuff just so I'm not having to work around it. Okay, with the help of a brush, all-purpose cleaner, and acetone, I was able to clean up and prep this area really well. You can see the difference between the grime over here of years of build up to this uh, right here. Looks like a new hull with the exception of the splits. And uh, I got all the hardware off of this end. And now I'm going to go get the G Flex and do some reading on it and see what it takes to uh, mix that stuff up. G Flex apparently is a two part epoxy resin. This is the G Flex 650. Okay, this G Flex is a one to one ratio. So it'd be real easy to mix up. Now, reading the instructions, and I saw on YouTube also, uh, for some reason, when applying G Flex onto a high density polyethylene or low density polyethylene or some of the plastics in general, for some reason, the G Flex does really well when you oxidize the uh, plastic with a flame torch. You actually have to hit the plastic with the flame and just lightly. You're not going to be able to see anything. But what it's doing is it's actually causing a little bit of oxidization on the surface. And for some reason, the G-Flex really adheres well to that. So I'm going to be putting a torch to my, uh, my rotomold polyethylene catamaran here, which uh, makes me cringe at the mere thought of that. But, but I'm about to do that anyways. Once I start this process, it says the work time on this is about 45 minutes. Um, warmer temperatures, it may be. Able, I may not have quite as much time to work with it, uh, and it's uh, pretty darn warm out here. It's uh, middle of July, so it's going to be it's going to be hot, and this stuff's all to work fast. But uh, I think I've still got plenty of time to deal with it. I'm going to use the compressor, and I'm going to use the air gun attachment to it, and try to blow that G flex deep inside these cracks, and see if that helps. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to give it a try. So anyways, time to mix some of this stuff up. Just using a small amount this go around. I've got some uh, leftover little tiny pieces of Kydex. This is going to be my little working tools on this project. And you want to mix this really well. Scrape the cardboard and everything. Get it all mixed in there really well. All right, I'm going to try to get you guys front row seats here. Okay, first thing we're going to do is touch this polyethylene with a torch. I'm going to create that oxidization on the plastic. Okay, now I'm going to go in there and apply some G-Flex. I will try to stay out of the way of the camera. Now, let's see what we can do. Oh, that crack is tiny. The sharp point on this kydex is doing a pretty good job of putting it inside that crack. I think what I'll do is I'll let that cure and then I'll come back and I'll do another coat over this and then I'll eventually get it down to where I'm going to sand it. Okay I believe I got that pretty good. Now I'm going to move to the top side. I'm going to have to mix quite a bit more G-Flex to fill up those cavities. Okay, I've thoroughly mixed up my G-Flex and now I'm just going to slowly feed this into these cracks. 
and try to do so without making a horrendous mess. This, this boat's been sitting out in the hot, brutal sun of Oklahoma for years. And uh, so now that it's split, I think it's probably split about as much as it's going to. All right, I'm going to give you guys a close-up. I don't figure you guys want to stare at my ugly mug the entire time. That cavity's, what, probably three-quarters of an inch to, uh, to an inch, inch deep. That goes down there ways. So I'm just going to keep on feeding it in there until it won't take any more. I want to try to do this without blocking your view. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get this fed down in there in that big cavity until it won't take any more at all. I'm doing this a little bit backwards. I'm wiping off the, ac ex the excess on the surface. There's a reason I'm doing that. Primarily because I forgot to uh, oxidize the surface. Oops. That should give me some really good adhesion on the surface. So I've got it flooded all in the cavity, and now I'm going over the surface. There we go. Make sure it's all the way across the top there. That's one down. Now I just have the other side to do. We've already oxidized the surface. And again, I'll go back over this with a light sanding and I'll check and see if I've completely filled up the cavity. And if I haven't, then uh, I'll mix up a little bit more and do the same process until this cavity is completely filled up. I should be able to come back in approximately two hours and be able to uh, do a second pour on this. All right, it's been 18 hours since I applied the uh, G-Flex. That is probably waterproof. All up in there, it's all adhered good to the screws and all around it. But uh, won't know for sure until we get it in the water. But before I put it in the water, I want to uh, get a little bit more G-Flex on the outside. So on this G-Flex, what I did was I my first mixture was pretty runny it, or it was the a consistency of honey and I basically poured it down into these cracks I did another mixture and I let it set up a little bit longer about 15 20 minutes before I ever applied it and it moved about like a cold jelly uh, you could apply it and it, and uh, and it wouldn't run until you walked away and after about 10-15 minutes it would uh, start to kind of roll down a little bit and so I had to work it back up into the crack. Uh, my third mixture I let it set up quite a bit where it was the consistency of very very soft putty and uh, that that worked well. Most of my crack was already filled in on both sides and all I did was I take, took the, uh, the G-Flex that was consistency of very soft putty and I filled it in and worked it on the top here to help uh, really cap it off here really well because if you don't what it's going to do is it's just going to wind up running down here down where you don't need it and I needed it right up in here to fill this in but I've got it hooked up to the tractor. Now I'm just going to take it over there in my little swimming pond and try it out. We're underway. Paddle probably would have been a good idea. This is where I'll be checking to see if anything bad is happening.
Now I'll give this till tomorrow and uh, if she's listing over to one side I know uh, the, the uh, repair job was a fail <laughs> but uh, it looks really good so I, th I think we're gonna be good. All right with that I will come back later come back tomorrow and we'll check it out see if there's any water in this hole. Okay it's the next evening and uh, catamaran's floating. So that's a good thing, even with all that weight on there. So I'm going to pull it over here into the shallows, and uh, we're going to check out the inside of that hole and see how it looks. Okay, now we're going to check see if there's any water in the hole. Looks like there's just a very little bit. Okay, got the catamaran off the tractor and I've got it tilted way back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this back up, dry the holes off, and then I'm going to put water in them and see if I have any water coming out anywhere. I'm not going to put a whole bunch of water in here, but probably a couple of gallons anyways. Okay, water's pouring in there into the hole. Now, we're going to see if we can see any pouring out. I expect to see some come out, just because there was a tiny bit of water in the hole. Alright, I'll bring you back here in a little bit when I see some action. Up, oh, I see it right now. Right there. Tiny little droplet right there at the edge of that screw hole. Oh, there's a drop. Okay, it's been 24 hours since I did the repair and it was just really nagging at me that I had the tiniest of little leaks there, just the tiniest. And I was racking my brain how in the world I was going to get epoxy in a, a tiny little crack at the edge of this insert here when the crack is so small that it only drips maybe once every 10 seconds or so. So, uh, I had an epiphany, had an idea. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my smallest shop vac that I've got, stuff a towel around the, uh, the hatch down there, turn on the shop vac, which will cause negative pressure, and then I'm going to put some really thin, runny epoxy right here, and it should draw it in there. It should pull it in there. And once it pulls in a little ways, then I'm going to shut the shop back off and let it set up. And I'll keep doing that. I'll try it when it's runny. And as the uh, epoxy starts to set up a little bit on my little, uh, my little pallet, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll let it set up a little thicker. And then I'll add a little bit more until hopefully I completely plug this hole. So I'm kind of testing the theory. And this is what I've got. I'll crack this open just a little bit where it's not watertight and I'll fire up the uh, shop vac and show you what happens. So using a burning incense where I've got a little bit of smoke, I'll bring it over by the plug. Look at that. Get it pulled right in there. Okay, I've got my epoxy mixed up and I really don't expect to see anything visually. But, uh, I'm gonna record it anyways. And I know for a fact that it was leaking right on the very bottom right corner. This time I've got Brooke with me. And she's gonna push the towel down into the hole to cause a, a little bit more pressure. Alright, you can go ahead and turn it on. After having run the shop back for three or four minutes while applying the very runny epoxy, it should have sucked uh, some of the epoxy anyways into the little crack that went right along the side of one of those bolt inserts. So I'm pretty confident that uh, once this is done, that this, uh, 
this leak is going to be completely sealed. I'm going to be using the Krylon semi-gloss cover max. So this is not advisable, but I'm going to try to paint this and film at the same time. So coming back down here, it looks like that paint has set up a little bit. So I want to give it another coat. I think that's going to work out pretty well. At least at a distance, nobody's going to notice there was even a repair there. All right. It is definitely a little whiter than the hull. Not by a whole lot, but it is definitely a shade or two. At a distance, nobody's going to notice it at all, especially when looking out across this entire thing. Okay, it's been another 24 hours, and I'm ready to sand this down, smooth it out a bit, tape it off, and paint it. And this little project I'm going to call done. All right, little repair job has a fresh coat of paint on it. From a distance, nobody will even notice it. Of course, there's going to be a rudder mount mounted back here also, so it's going to cover up a lot of this. So that should conclude the video on the uh, G-Flex and using it on this uh, Rotomold polyethylene. The main thing is I'll be able to go selling without fear of sinking this thing while I'm out going across the Gulf of Mexico or out in a lake.